Welcome to week two, everybody. We are back. And uh, while we're talking, first of all, Ryan Stasek is a trooper. What What were you doing last night, Ryan? Tell our Tell our viewers. I was changing lives and melting face. <laughs> <laughs> where Where was the gig? Death Kings played their first show at uh, Poor House in Charleston. Um, I think uh, our guitarist Mike Ganser is is, uh, is is beautifully asleep still. I don't think we got back until three a.m. But um, <laughs> we we let out all the gas. It was like a seven con a seven song encore. We probably played like twenty punk oh, cool. songs. Eight originals and and uh, about twelve punk or metal or hard rock covers. Man, it was good, including waiting room, including some Fugazi. You got to play Fugazi. And you had a guest. And Kanika came and played uh, "Welcome to Hell" with us too. So it was special. All right, and tell us also what did you do when Pittsburgh blocked that extra point? Well, here's the funny story. I was on a four hour layover in Dallas. Dallas again. Dallas. And, uh, starting to be my second home from home. I went to the Admirals Club and demanded the guy put on the Bengals Steelers game so I could be loud in the back room. Um, I watched the first three quarters and then I had to I had to board my plane. So when I got on the plane, I had my Najee Harris shirt on and I was in the exit row and everybody knew that I was watching the game, but nobody could watch it. We could only listen to it on the on the broadcast. So I didn't understand what was happening. Like it said, oh, they, they're down in the one, they're kicking, they, they scored, it's it's over. And then it said like final, no time left, 2020. I'm like, what the hell happened? You know, like they blocked the extra point. Like we're going crazy. And then as the plane's taxiing and delayed and taking off, I actually got to uh, get the internet to come on. And I, I watched the victory at the end. I watched all the, all the missed kicks and then the fight with time expiring made kick and uh, went ape shit up in the about, at about 30,000 feet. <laughs> And you guys might have the best. You might have the best defense in the league. Yeah. Well, when healthy. Yeah. yeah uh, will course. will the go ahead? What'd you say? Or Cincinnati might have one of the worst offensive lines in the league. Who knows? It could be a combination <laughs> of both. I don't know. Uh, will the pick thrill? Everybody was uh, very impressed with you, and you uh, you took it. You took the week. Uh, you were three and one. Stay awesome. second. Stace and I were two and two and two, and Carl Carl uh, has something to build on. Um, but seriously, but the way you articulated everything, great job! And we we would like you to to lead. Would you? Are you cool with that? I'm, I I really like that. Hold up, let me let me find my game real quick because I'm I'm pretty confident about this one. Oh my gosh, I'm in the wrong area. Here, I'll tell you what I what I'm confident about. Go ahead. I, I live here in Atlanta. Everybody's down on the Falcons, and it's understandable. They tend to blow games. But they've got a running game, and the Rams are favored by 10 and a half. 10 and a half. Yeah. That's too much. I'm that taking the Falcons, and I'm taking the 10 and a half. That's my first pick. Falcons are a pretty good team. I'm not saying they're going to playoffs or anything, but I do think the Rams are coasting a little bit right now, and they need a slap in the face, and maybe a, maybe a 0 and 2 would be the slap. But at least I say Falcons cover. All right. All right. Well, I'm I'm gonna go with the uh, Vikings and Eagles game, and I'm gonna take the the, Beagle, the um, Vikings with the t uh, plus two. And I, mm. I just that team was my team last week. It is my team as the dark horse this year, and they really showed up and they showed everything they had. Justin Jefferson went insane. He might be the best wide receiver in the last five ten years. And you also have that offense, which all around looked way better than it ever has under Mike Zimmer. So I'm really confident in that uh that spread, and I really think they're gonna take it by more than that. I heard someone say that's the first time Kirk Cousins have, has ever had an offensive-minded uh, head coach. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yes, I would completely agree. Are we talking possible MVP, Kirk? <laughs> easy. Easy. <laughs> Mahomes is still in the league. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Josh Allen. All right. Who's next? Carl, you want to you go next? I'm trying to pull, pull that. You got it pulled up. Uh, all right. Well, I'll, I'll just go ahead with um... – uh, cards and Raiders. I, I like the, what was it, five and a half? I actually like that a lot. I actually had I had the cards coming in at 20 and uh, the Raiders at 31. So um, that's kind of what I picked on the on the scoring. I think that, um, I think the cards are in trouble. Mm. I don't think they look very good at all. Uh, if Monday was any indication. 
Um, I think the Raiders just um, – I think they're going to get their uh, – Devontae Adams is going to start getting more looks. Uh, Derek Carr is going to get more comfortable, and everything's going to go in their favor. So I really like them. I like the spread here at five and a half. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna lock in the Indianapolis Colts over Jacksonville. I just – I, I can't believe that – I mean, I wasn't going to bet on Houston to win a football game this entire year. The fact that they <laughs> they were up 20-3 to three and they brought it to overtime. And I think Blankenship was uh, – he was blank too. They could have won that game. They wouldn't have not – they would not have covered the spread. But I th- what's the spread? You have three and a half or four? Let's see. Jacksonville. Which one was that? That was Jacksonville. Game. Jacksonville. Colts. And Colts. It is four. It is four. Okay. I am pretty confident that the Colts are going to bounce back. They can't go zero and two. There's just too much power, too much, too much talent on that team. And let's be honest, Jacksonville—they're—they're they're not a good football team yet. They are not a good football team yet. So I'm going to lock in the Colts. It's my first pick. Speaking of off the offensive lines, they should get an offensive line for that kid, the kid from uh, from Douglasville, Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence and ATN. James Robinson looked good though. James yeah, Robinson. Good. Nice bounce back. There's a football stadium right near my house where I walk my dog. And one time when I was walking, I was told, hey, Trevor Lawrence played here once. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> That's got to be impressive. I didn't know he's from Lawrenceville. Uh, I think not Lawrenceville. I think it's Douglasville. I'm not sure. I have to look it up. It's one of the, yeah, or Dawsonville or something. One of those, you know. One of those places. One of those cool little lesser known Georgia towns. Um. Since he's going to kick the crap out of Dallas, Dallas screwed me last week. So I'm coming back on them since he's, uh, uh, since he's embarrassed now two two in a row, they've lost two in a row. Think about it. That Super Bowl was a crusher and then they lost a crusher to Pittsburgh. I don't think they want to fade in the sunset. I think Joe Burrow is a, is a man of great uh, fiber and he's not going to let them lose again. And not only that, he, he they need a statement game right now. And this is it. I say, uh, I believe the spread was uh, seven. Is it or is it six? Yeah, it's seven. Yeah, and who is it. the who? Who is the Dak up quarterback there? Cooper. Oh. Cash. Cooper Cup, Cooper Bush. Cooper. Cooper something. He looks all right. Cooper Bush something like that. I don't know. Okay, let's be honest. They might be the worst team in football this week. I said it. <laughs> Cowboys. Yeah, I do. I do have to say, I underrated the. Buccaneers defense. I forgot how good they are at stunting and how fast they are. Yeah, that CD just... Lamb value just plummeted too. Oh yeah, I was just saying the CD Lamb value plummeted in fantasy. Already traded him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Well, I guess that leads me up next, and I uh, I'm going to take a risky one, but I really have some confidence, and I'm going to take the uh, Chargers Chiefs game, and I really think the Chargers are going to take this. I think the Chiefs are a little bit overhyped coming out of that first Ooh. week. They looked amazing. They did. But that Cardinals defense is debatably the worst defense in football right now. So I look at this Chiefs team and I'm like, yes, I don't think they're better than the Super Bowl years, but they're still a great team. So I think they're going to keep it close. I think it's going to be a close game, which is where the spread comes in. But I think the Chargers are going to take it by at least a touchdown. I think that offense and that defense combined is one of the best teams in football. Ben Will against with- the Chiefs in September. <laughs> He's what? Got the Cuyas. He's got the Cuyas. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's me. Uh, Packers, Bears. May I, I say, Pat- Carl Engelman, co-host of Stu on this, episode three That's just right. out today. With New Brad Farberman. Uh, what is it, October 4th? Yeah. A long game. Look out for it, folks. Artwork by Dylan Vaughn. That's right. Uh, I had to go with the Packers, Bears on this one. Packers Ooh. 28, Bears 10. Ooh. So, obviously, the, I think they're going to get walloped. Um, uh, there is no way two-time NFL MVP Aaron Rodgers is going to allow the Bears to beat them at home week two at at um, uh, Lambeau. It's just it's never going to happen. He is. I don't care. He if he 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 went. I he probably went to the orphanage this week and picked up his next wide receivers and signed them on. He's going to make it work. It's going to happen. That's a Brady move. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I do like to spread 10 on that, obviously. Uh, I'm actually I'm more eight, but whatever. Or 7.5, I should say. <laughs> I'm looking at 10 spread, though. You're going 10 with spread. Yeah. Packers 10 spread. given 10. And maybe the Bears are a little overconfident after their little splashy victory. I'm a, I'm a Bears fan. There's no fucking way. 
Yeah, I, was in a, I was in a sports bar. It was kind of hilarious to look over at that TV every once in a while and just see the ball would land and be like, <laughs> yeah, that was that second was, half. It was, moist. it was moist in Chicago. Moist. Um, all right. Well, I have to, uh, I'm just going to let you know, I'm, I'm going to stay in my division here, the AFC North. I am going to piggyback the Bengals. I really think without Dak, and I thought they looked terrible anyway. I don't. I don't think the Cowboys have a chance this year. To be honest, I think the Bengals. I think the AFC North is a tough division. I think the Bengals back uh, bounce back. They cover the spread in that game. Um, I'll, can I do my next pick since I'm in the AFC North here, and and it concerns you, Rob? Um, my Steelers. They're giving me a point and a half. Are gonna? Or is it in New England? No, and I think you're getting. I think you're getting points at home. Yeah, it's plus one and a half at home against New England. Your quarterback's dinged up. We're dinged up, too. I know T.J. Watt tore, tore a peck, but Highsmith, Cam Hayward, we're still stacked on defense. Trubisky didn't make any mistakes. He didn't do anything, but he didn't make any mistakes, and that's important. And I think we can do that again as we watch the Dolphins go in and crush New England last week. The Dolphins are an underrated team, too. But I think Pittsburgh handles business, stays undefeated, and beats Belichick and the New England Patriots in Pittsburgh. Uh, the spread is mystifying, and I, I can't help but wonder if it's a legacy thing, if just people who aren't really paying attention but are just used to New England bouncing back from a loss are just going to blindly bet for New England. But they're a mess now. The offensive line's not coordinating, co coordinating with each other. They're not communicating. They're going against one of the best defenses in the league. Their, their quarterback is frustrated and confused. They didn't even play their deep threat receiver. They they got this guy from Miami. Who who's the uh, the wide receiver we got from Miami? Uh, Devontae, Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker, whose strength is as a number two guy, but now somebody, probably Matt Patricia, has run a foul with Kendrick Bourne, so he sits the whole game. They put him in for one game. Matt, Matt goes to him right away. Big biggest play of the game. Take him right out. It's disarray in New England. You take Pittsburgh, and you 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 be grateful that you're you're getting points. I know. <laughs> what the fuck. I, I, and I don't like to bet on my own team, but I, but I have to do it. Najee Harris said that he, he left wearing a boot, but he said he's, he's going to play. The guy's a beast. They can't be any worse at offense than they were last week. So if the O-line gets a little protection and they start using their weapons, a little more accuracy on the, on the deeper ball, maybe Pickens will show up and, and be uh, relevant in that game. I think that Steelers are going to win 24-21. I say 10-6. to <laughs> that's, that's more realistic. There you go. The over yeah. under is 40. Will, how often is the over under that low? It never. Never, ever, ever. And it's it's ridiculous that it is, honestly. It's, it's a crazy spread. <laughs> so that's I mean, the fact that the Patriots are even counted as a team that would be on the same level as a team that has a top tier defense. They have nothing that's going top tier for them right now. And the run game was the only thing that had the chance to be something good for them this year, and they're just going away from it to go to Kendrick Bourne, like you said, not even your best wide receiver on the team. We go into the second. I don't see a way that New England scores more than seven points in that game. Yeah. All right, hammer that under. Definitely hit that under. That's why I'm so, – maybe drop below 40, which would be bizarre. All right, Carl, so all you. Let's see here. Washington and the Lions. Hmm. Um, the Lions aren't good. They're never going to be good. Just shut up. Just come on. All you Lions fans out there, you're, you're dreaming. <laughs> Please. Washington's got this one. I, I say um, to comment on that, though, I'm not using and this I'm in my two pick. and a half on that, Washington. But just to comment on that, um, I do think you have to preference this with the fact that they have St. Brown, DeAndre Swift, Hutchinson. That team, I'm telling you, give it two, three years, that team's going to be coming up and actually turning it around for the first time in a long time. Well, I actually they had what Matt Stafford and they had Megatron. Uh, Megatron and <laughs> yeah. They did. They did. Didn't win a game that one. They didn't season. win a game. However, <laughs> however, they they put up some points against everybody. Was talking about the Eagles being the That's best right. defense. Right, yeah. Yeah. Swift is legit. Saint Brown. They have some offense. It could be scary. But let's talk about the other side. You've got. Uh, um, 
Pete Wentz from uh, the punk rock bassist playing a uh, quarterback over there now. Carson Wentz. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> there's right. there's some there's some talent there. You've got yeah, Samuel talent. McLaurin. Like there, there. You know that that could be a scary team too. I don't think either team is is particularly good, but um, I'm going to stay away from that one. But I but but Carl, I do think that the, the Lions are sneakier than people are letting on. I feel like the stench of the Lions is in New England now in the form of Matt Patricia. <laughs> I'm getting a repulsive vibe off of that guy. But but let's let's make things interesting tonight. It's Thursday night football. Everybody's motivated to get these picks in early. I think the Chargers, I, I agree with everything Will says about the Chargers. I don't, don't think they're ready. I'm going to take the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs, I know Arizona's awful, but I, I feel like the Chiefs are clicking. And um, again, got something to prove. You know? What do you nice. think the spread is on that? Four, I think. Four? That's. Yeah. I think that's good. And then uh, you know we can have fun watching tonight. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think the total scores? What the uh, the money line? Uh, KC thirty one, uh, San Diego twenty four, with Mahomes uh, driving and win in the fourth quarter. So uh, specific five points or something like that. And so what that adds up to so uh, 56, 55. Quick KC question. Tyreek Hill, well, or, or any of you guys, but um, did you hear anything about him being a real negative locker room guy at the end of the year, particularly in the conference championship game? And that's why the, the KC was ready to let him go. Oh, yeah, of course. And you can, you can, I mean, you can obviously see that Kansas City as a team, as a culture, and the way they came out, especially Patrick Mahomes when he's not trying to force feed to another player after Travis Kelsey, because when he starts doing that, the touches kind of get put into two boxes. But uh, I just think that you, when you lose that versatility of having that speed on your team, where you have that guy that can just bolt down the field and you always have to run a cover three, a cover four, you're always having to guard against it. When that's gone, it shrinks the field. And that makes Travis Kelsey have a little bit more difficult time in that short route medium area where he was thriving when Tyreek Hill was there. I think that gets slowed down a little bit more. And I think that's how the offense slows down a little bit more. I guess that makes me up as well. Um, I'm going to go with my, uh, my team here. And I know they were lit down last week, but I'm telling you guys, do not give up on them yet. I'm taking Sam Fran with the eight and a half. And um, I, I just want to let you guys know, he, Trey Lance has not played a real football game except the couple games he played last year over the last, like, three years. He played in a monsoon at home against a Bears team who was hungry and was just getting destroyed. Is that an offensive excuses. line? Excuses. I'm telling you guys right now, Brennan Ayuk will be more involved next week, and this team is going to be different. Uh, I, I think San Fran's winning by two touchdowns. You guys can put your money on it. Hey, one, another quick question. What are the chances Jimmy Garoppolo goes to Dallas? Pretty good. He looks like the All-American quarterback. <laughs> Look good in the uniform, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think the Cowboys – I'd say hi. I say the Cowboys instantly become possibly a playoff team with Jimmy G there. Nope. I think so. They got a good uh, – the offensive line is the only thing that really gives me a, a little bit of worry. But besides that, they got weapons everywhere. That defense is special. Maybe not in the yards category, but the turnover count category is just ridiculous there. So I think they got some attention. Who was the other person they were thinking about? Cam Newton? Oh, Cam Newton was the other option? <laughs> yeah. What, 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 take, would you, uh, what would you take? Steve DeBerg. Mason, Mason Rudolph. <laughs> yeah, Mason, Mason Rudolph. Rudolph. The rest out there. <laughs> uh, I'm very interested that you guys are picking um, – uh, your confidence in such large spreads um, and uh, Rob did the opposite because anything over eight and 10 points, that's a lot of points in the NFL. Oh, and yeah, it's, points. it's, that's yeah. really hang, yeah. hanging them out to dry right there. So respect, I respect your, your well, the, picks, your, your confident picks there. Well, the tricky thing is some games they can be way up and then just a fourth quarter, just garbage yards, a team can get within the yeah. spread. I, yeah. I, I, I forgot. There's a fa- There's a name for that, but uh, you know, losing your, Losing your pick because of the fourth quarter garbage points. I forget that. Forget. There's a gambler name for it. But anyway, go ahead, Carl. Well, um, I'm going with an upset with the with the Jets and the Browns. I think the Ooh. Jets are going to win, and it's only because I pray the rosary every now and then. And the the Virgin Mary came to me in an apparition and said that the last time they played on December 27th, 2020, that the Jets won by uh, seven points. So. I'm going six and a half with the Jets and an upset. Wow, Virgin Mary likes ball. I love it. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, hey, pardon the interruption here, but um, <laughs> Carl, I'm going to piggyback. Wait, wait, hold on. What's that, Elvis? 
Carl's full. Carl's full of shit. Okay, so I'm going to change. <laughs> wow, the, the Browns I to win it. by a touchdown over the J E T S Jets. They suck, and that's three of my picks in the AFC North that and is. the Colts. So uh, go. Uh, it's so weird to say go Browns, go Bengals, go Steelers. But if my wallet's <laughs> speaking. Then uh, you know, I'm okay with it. There's no way. I like this. We have some against each other, so that two people are definitely losing here in right. some of these head-to-head matchups. So uh, I think the Brownies handle them after after showing what they did with uh, their backup running back. I mean, you have Chubb putting up triple digits, and then you have Kareem Hunt coming in and handling business. Uh, was it Jacoby Brissett? He didn't look too bad. I didn't get to watch the whole game to saw some highlights, but I just don't think the Jets are a very good team. And my wallet likes to uh, prey on the weak. It's the fight we've all been waiting for. Virgin Mary against Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> all right, before we go, Carl, the voting has begun on Umball. You have any Umball thoughts? It's in Chicago in November, folks. I think some tickets remain. Also, New Year's Eve in Atlanta, tickets remain for you traveling um freaks. Um, any on both thoughts? Um, actually, I'm I'm starting to. Uh, Sarah gave me a template of the helmet. I'm going to design a helmet. Are you really? Mm-hmm. I've got this idea in my head. You'll see it. You'll see it. It'll be part of my product. What does that do anyway? Do you guys know? I just play bass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you care October what people vote 21st. for? October twenty first. That is it. October twenty first. You have it. Okay. Now. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. It falls in sober October slash um, Inktober. So that'll be one of my projects. Nice. Do you care about the voting, car, uh, Ryan? Blah, blah, blah. Do you care about the voting in Humble or do you just whatever? Just tell me what to play and I play it. Well, I mean, yeah, I care, but, uh, you know, the, the fans vote. So whatever they vote, I I, I, I happily do. You know, do a lot of vote choice. for 10th grade? Is that an option? I don't know. Do it, you know, it probably don't make it an option, right? I yeah, think we I should just like we should stage a coup, and you guys should play tenth grade. I don't, you know, <laughs> Carl, there, or if Rob was voting, that's what he would vote for because Rob wants that I, back so bad. I, I I love tenth grade. I'd have to. Um, Joel just sent me a tape of us playing in 1997. Um, I haven't listened to it yet. Someone converted a cassette tape to to MP3, and I know tenth grade's on there, so I'm I'm kind of anxious to go back and listen to it because I think there's, I mean that's 25 years ago. There's a bunch of parts that that we don't remember. I'd be down for a, a rearrangement, but I don't think uh, Captain Bayless is uh, is on board <laughs> that ship. And if 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 Bayless isn't aboard that ship, that ship doesn't sail. So you know. Last- the last time I asked him to play nachos, he was about to punch me. So I don't think I'm asked for it again. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. Oh, well. You know, some things are, are better left uh, in the 90s. You know? I don't know. The current tones, it might sound interesting and make Jimmy Knowledge really happy. I don't know. But whatever. It's your band. Yeah. Your band, dude. Your yeah. band. Hey, you know, it's our band. <laughs> it's a family band. Yeah. All right, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah, as always. And uh, I hope we all go four and oh, no, wait, that can't happen. <laughs> Not possible. It cannot. I'm rooting for the AFC North, but I'm okay with, uh, and, you know, I'm, I, I'm not uh, disrespecting Baltimore, but I, I would like to see them lose. And one I, last thing before we go, remember this, remember this next week, San Fran by two touchdowns. Remember it. <laughs> <laughs> remember it. And speaking of Baltimore, should, should Lamar Jackson have taken the contract offer he was given? He we'll should have. Yeah. He should have. I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah. A lot of guaranteed money there. You can't just pass that up for injury risk and whatever else there is. That's that's a lot of money. <laughs> he's he's a pocket passer now, so we'll we'll oh. see how it works out. Yeah, <laughs> that, that'll be interesting. All right, everybody, thank All you, right, guys. Great to Talk be dropped. Up. So good to be dropped among this crowd. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>